they start with me. Hey. Well, hello. <laughs> um, my name's Anna Ford, and I'm the program director of New Vocations, and we've been doing these one o'clock virtual tours, um, part of Horse Country Tours. Uh, initiative and today is part two of our series last week we talked about new vocations history and today we're going to talk about zoom over to Merriworth farm um, their history and our relationship with them and the Susan Donaldson foundation as well as we're going to visit our rehab barn and um, kind of take you through you know what we do here at our program which is we um, rehab, retrain, and rehome retired racehorses. And so we're gonna focus on the rehab part of that. So this is gonna be a little bit of a driving tour. We'll stop at the rehab barn and then we'll drive a little bit more and um, see how it goes. So here we go. This is my one of my favorite things every morning when I turn on to Dolan Lane. And even with just the honeysuckle that's coming up and some of the leaves on the trees, you can see it's almost like a tunnel. Um, but I can't tell you how cool it is every morning to drive in on this road. Um, I, I feel like it's the tunnel to heaven um, every morning. And so, again, we're on Dolan Lane. Um, and although you can't really see, Landry, you can go over to the right a little bit and see some of the fields to the right. Those are actually hay fields. And then everything to our left, let's get past this barn. Um, so everything on the left and the right of this road is part of Merriworth Farm. And so just a brief history on Merriworth Farm. Um, it was founded in the late 20s, uh, 1920s, by Walter Salmon, who was a New Yorker, and who found that he had some interest in having a horse farm and having racehorses as well as cattle and a tobacco farm and he created Merworth Farm and at one point it was up to 5,000 acres. Right now it's about 1,200 acres and um, it was a pretty historical farm back in the day. Um, pretty well known as much as Calumet Farm as far as how many stakes runners and producers that it was um, producing back then. Um, one of their claim to fame was that they had the back cover of the blood horse for 20 some years and um, and yeah so it, it's been a pretty historical farm uh, when Walter Salmon um, passed away the farm went on to his son Walter Jr. and then when he passed away his daughter um, Suzanne Donaldson ended up uh, purchasing it with her inheritance and that's what we have today is Merriworth Farm and so when Susan um, passed away, and you can zoom around, in 2011, she left all of Merriworth Farm, which is 1,200 acres, um, and all of the horses that she had into the Susan Donaldson Foundation. And um, we partnered with the Susan Donaldson Foundation starting in two years after her death in 2013, and which then later became what we have here, which you can see the entrance of our main farm here in Lexington. We call it New Vocations at Merriworth Farm. Um, and so we partnered with the Susan Donaldson Foundation. They gave us the land, um, over 150 acres, to build state of art retraining and adoption center for retired racehorses. Um, but our relationship with them, which was what we're gonna kind of focus on today, started in 2013 by them allowing us to use um, one of their barns as a place for our horses once they were retired that needed rehab care from injuries before um, they entered into our transitional training program and adoption. So that's where we're headed right now. I just love these walls. So part of our relationship with them, our partnership with them, um, they allow us to use this barn, which is called the Williams Barn at 800 Dolan Lane. And this is a barn that, um, I'm not sure how old it is, but it's a pretty cool wooden barn, at least 50 or more years old. Um, and we get to use this barn as a free lease 
and all the paddocks to my left and then there's another 10 paddocks to the right um, for our horses that are in need of rehab before they come across the street to our training facility. So our relationship with um, Merriworth Farm actually in 2013 just started on the rehab side and then it grew into um, them allowing us to build and give us land which we just saw on the across the street. So let's go on in and see what's going on here. into the rehab barn we're going to walk over here and see some of the horses that are still part of the Susan Donaldson Foundation and part of Merrowers Farm. We'll walk on over. So these horses out here um, are part of Susan's horses that she when she passed away there was a there was over 200 horses. Um, some of them were sold if they had any value as brood mares, um, as race horses, but the majority of them, over 150, reside right here on this property and will live here the rest of their lives. And this is just a handful of them that are here. Um, I believe it's 170 horses that are currently retired here at Merriworth Farm. And of those horses, at least 90% of them are thoroughbreds. Um, the majority, like I said, were Susan Donaldson's personal horses. And so it was a great uh, legacy that she left. Um, not only does she help new vocations on a daily basis now through um, the services that they provide for us and the land and the barns, um, but these horses get to live the rest of their lives out here and our, all their needs are met and um, it's just really quite amazing that they get to live out their days here and they're all very well cared for. And that was what Susan really wanted her farm to be. Um, in her will, it was stated that she wanted her farm to be a sanctuary for unwanted horses, and um, and that's what um, it is today and more. Um, I think that she would be really um, happy with with all the good works that are going on here at Merriworth Farm um, between the retirement side that, that her crew manages to our rehab and retraining side um, that we manage. Um, hundreds of horses every year are being blessed by her foundation, so we're very grateful and blessed for that. So we'll go ahead and head into um, the rehab barns of Williams Barn. If you guys have any questions as we're walking along, please put them in the um, message section and we'll do our best to answer those. You can see some more of um, Susan's horses out there, more of the retirees. that are, are needing um, some rehab care from an injury before they enter into the adoption program, they come here. So we're going to come see a couple of them. Got a little Madonna going right now. Maybe we should turn her down a little bit. There we go. Some great background music. I'm going to start karaoke into that. We'll save everyone. <laughs> so I have asked uh, Leandra to come visit or meet us over here and take us through the rehab barn. Leandra is our facility director and trainer here at Merriworth Farm, um, new vocations at Merriworth Farm. And um, so just to go through our rehab process briefly, um, the number one reason a horse retires from racing is normally due to some type of injury, whether it's a minor soreness, muscle soreness, tightness, hoof issue or a fracture or something major that needs surgery. Um, but the number one reason we get horses are normally due to the fact that there's some type of injury that's going to prevent them from continuing as a racehorse. So with that in mind, a lot of our work 
is actually done here at the rehab barn. Um, and all of our facilities across the country have rehab sections of their facilities. And um, what takes the longest, a lot of people think it's training the horses for new careers, but it's actually getting them rehabbed and healthy and sound for that second career that takes the longest because it can take anywhere from 30 days to a year. Um, and so we're going to meet a couple of these guys just to kind of give you an idea of what we have. So this is Homedale. And um, you want to give us a little update on what he's he's doing? Should we bring him out? He's a really cool horse. Do we have a... Yeah, let me grab a leaf drop. So I wrote some notes down, um, some things to, to highlight on this poem, Dow. Um, he's a Medagladora, which our friends down the road here, also part of Horse Country Tours at Godolphin and Darley. Um, so he, he um, he's a son of Medagladora. He sold for 250000 as a yearling. Very expensive purchase. Um, he was bred by the Phipps, which is a very historical famous uh, breeder. Um, and um, he came to us through the NIFAS Take the Lead program, which is a great program, horseman's program out of New York um, that helps fund um, our initiative here for any horse that they have leaving one of their tracks, um, one of the Naira tracks. So let's get him out here and take a look at Mr. Homedale. So most Medagladoras, if you're if you're a horse person and familiar with them, they're all pretty big in stature, and he's definitely that. Um, and he's been here since September, right? Mm -hmm. So, and he had a soft tissue injury, or no, he had some soreness behind that we had to deal with, right? Yeah, yeah. He had he had his SI injected, um, which is right there. So imagine kind of your pelvic region. That's the same thing for them. This is the SI and the sacroiliac is their pelvic region. And um, when we inject it, it's a combination of steroids and a buffer for your joints. So a lot of people, if you've had something injected like a Colfer's elbow or a patent injury where you've needed your joint to be or injected, it's very similar. So we're looking to alleviate the inflammation and then create a little bit of buffer, especially if that's something that they're lacking. So that just hopefully nips the inflammation in the butt and they can go move on and have a prosperous career path after that. But sometimes they have, I mean, they can't sit on their couch and relax and ice and rest their foot or something. So the injections help to give them the alleviation of inflammation and pain that they might not otherwise be able to do because they're on all four feet all the time. Yeah, and, he's, and his type of um, situation is something that we can definitely work through and with time and um, you know we gave him a lot of time just to see if it would correct itself um, and it didn't so but we don't always go straight to to injections but um, in his case that's mm -hmm. what the vet recommended and that's yep. what is helping him move forward and we're hoping to have him over on the training side here in the near future so just wanted to say hi to him but he's the perfect example of the type of horses that we get and just just needs a little time and get them going soon and hopefully get them at home. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Homedale. Let's see what behind us or back over. Oh, let's come over here. We got a, an Uncle Mo. Let's look at Mo Laden. Hey, bud. Another one of our local farms uh, stands Uncle Mo, and this is one of his sons. Um, almost over Ashford and um, we call them Mo which we love Uncle Mo's they all seem to have really good dispositions really good minds and um, this guy just had some soft tissue injury um, mm -hmm. kind of like a ligament injury was strained and those injuries are are very um, they're a great injury to have because they heal really really well um, and they can go on to do a lot of different things um, the only problem with them is that they just take a lot of time. So he's been here since, not quite as long, he's only been here since February. You know, lead him out and take a peek at him. Mm -hmm. um, but he's gonna get the time needed to make sure that soft tissue injury is good and healed. And um, once he gets cleared by our vet, <laughs> he'll move right across the street. And then that's where Leandro's team takes over and starts riding him and training on him. He's a beautiful horse. Yeah, he has a lovely classic build and 
a luxurious four lock, and he just has the sweetest personality. And I also, when I was looking up his information, he was a $650,000 purchase as a yearling. Um, so quite an expensive purchase. Um, but, you know, his owners, which have been great supporters of ours, um, really wanted what was best for him. And, um, you know, wanted to make sure, although he couldn't be a racehorse, he could have probably raced at a lower track, a lower level. Um, but they opted to, you know, make sure he got a good home and go, he can then excel and, a, and have a really productive second career, which is exactly what we love to have and see. So it was St. Elias was the donor for him. He came, came up from Florida um, from Todd Fletcher's farm. All right, let's put him back in. So the horses that are in the stalls, there's only about six that are inside right now. Um, there are guys that are out all night and then they come in during the day and then the guys that are out all right now are out all day and then come in at night. Um, our daytime horses are horses that we are newer to the program and maybe need limited time outside. So we keep an eye on them during the day. So let's head out and see um, is it House, House yeah. um, who's out front. He's a really pretty horse. Hopefully everybody will see a video compilation. We are working with someone to try to document the different stages that are pillars of our program. just to flat out go running yet. <laughs> we want to kind of limit his exercise because um, one thing's for sure, thoroughbreds, if you've been around them for even just a couple minutes and they're in a field, you'll learn quickly they just love to run. They definitely are bred to run and they're the, horse, they're the ones that are out there running all the time if they have the opportunity. So we don't want to give him that opportunity yet. He can stretch his legs in this little round area and then in another couple weeks he'll graduate to something a little bit larger. But he's got what we say a lot of chrome. Um, he's got four white socks, which are so cute. White braids. He has plenty of hay in his round pen, but he prefers being hand like fed that. with the fresh <laughs> And he also came from the Ninth Us Take the Lead program up from a New York, up in New York. And um, see, Patty Hogan did his surgery. Is that correct? Um, he came over from Park, actually. Was it from Park? Okay, Park did his surgery. And um, yeah, we're, we're excited to see what he gets to do. <laughs> Good boy. Okay, well, I know it's kind of windy, so we're going to head back to the car. Yeah, we'll switch over. I think I was wrong, actually. I think he was Patty Hogan. I think it, thought it was Because it was Sea Shark I was thinking of. Different case, my mistake. that's what you're talking about is going to be eligible for we're hoping obviously we will leave the final determination to see how they are once they start back in work but he should be all right for a mid-level career and what that means most of the time is uh, around three foot and then after that we'll see if he wants to do more or not 
was jumping around for a second. So very a athletic, yes. You want to show off, bud? He's feeling a little bit like he's, you know, in isolation, but he's not. We're just, just for his own good right now. And he can see all the bunnies in the other fields, too. But he does, he's a showman, if nothing else. He does enjoy putting on a production. So now we're gonna drive out um, to another section of the farm. Across the street, right directly in front of us, is part of the land that the Susan Donaldson Foundation free leases to new vocations. And we have two really large fields uh, directly across here. And one of them we uh, designate as a field just for horses that need extra time to be out, um, to heal from injuries, and um, and that's where we're gonna head. On our way there, you can see to my right the little paddocks that, that I had mentioned earlier. It, this is all the, the paddocks where our horses that were in the Williams barn, that they go out at night and some during the day. See how narrow our roads are so we play chicken about every day <laughs> most of the cars that go on the road though are either uh, new vocation employees or Merriworth farm like this right here is <clears throat> teamwork makes the dream work yeah if you can see straight ahead to the right of that stop sign there's a herd of horses way up there I don't know if you can see it but just those are blitz. more yeah those are more horses that are part of the Susan Donaldson Foundation part of the Merriworth retirement side of the farm and there'll be some more here on the right. Here's show on the right, you can see them up on top of the hill. <laughs> there they are. All of the fingers. <laughs> and then if you zoom over to the left here, you can see our training facility up on the hill. And then he, these are the two large fields that I was mentioning earlier. This is the far end of our prop, the prop, part of the property that we lease. Just gonna pull right in here. And this field was sponsored by NYTHA and um, we call it the NYTHA field. And like I said earlier, this is about a 10 acre field. Here on the left, this is another entrance for Merriworth Farm. The, our, the farm manager, Jimmy Boyd, lives that, back down that lane, as well as another 50 to 60 horses. We really feel fortunate to have this much space. Um, acres is Merriworth and how many acres is New Vocations on? So Merriworth, the far, large farm itself, is 1,200 acres and then New Vocations is on 150, just over 150 of those acres um, is what we occupy. We're passing the Williams barn again and then this is another angle that's really beautiful part of the farm mm -hmm. before we get to the training side.
been so great to have the grass literally overnight just turn green and grow up so fast. So now we're turning it into the main part of New Vocations side of the farm. And here we have 30 stalls and keep about 40 horses at any given time. Um, 30 or more are in training um, and to be up for, put up for adoption. And so you can see we have the, the outdoor arena and then behind that outdoor arena is our indoor arena. Here we have our offices where our admin staff work out of as well as Leandra, who's not admin, but trainer. <laughs> You'll notice that all of our fields have signs like that on them. Um, all of our pastures have been sponsored by people within, primarily within people within the industry. Here's another one you can read. They found us. Oh, there's Rambo. Okay, and then coming back to the new area, which anyone interested in sponsoring. We have not had the back fields here sponsored yet, but we just got them painted and built, or built and painted that more than that order. <laughs> got some fields being mowed. So to the right, you can see there's a big field there that we just opened up. And then the one that I wanted to focus on is back here. You'll see there's five bay mares, bay ladies. The bay ladies. And these girls are all part of our rehab program and have various different minor injuries that just simply they needed a little bit more time to be outside and they've been enjoying this R&R. &R. And they have all of that space back there. Should we get out and say hi to these girls? I know it's a little yes. windy, so we'll apologize for that. Babies! Love that goose with the cribbing collar there. That's mixing it up right here. And then this is Nagany Ann. And then over here we've got thrice. And thrice. So these guys basically will be staying out here until they're on the road.
So please, please, please check us out at newvocations.org and check out some of our adoptable horses. And then last, but definitely not least, uh, we could not do what we do without private support and donations. And if you're interested in supporting our day-to-day -day efforts or being part of our capital campaign and helping us build new fields and, and barns and such like that, um, please visit us at newvocations.org and click on donate and it'll show you all